Yamnaya is an early Bronze Age culture of European Russia, named such after their custom of burying the dead in pits, or Yami in Russian. Yamnayans inhabited the fertile lands of the Pontic Caspian Steppe, a vast region stretching from the northern shores of the Black Sea to the eastern fringes of modern-day Kazakhstan. Here, the Yamnaya culture, also known as the Pit Grave culture, first emerged around 3000 BC. They were among the first to domesticate horses, which they used not only for transportation, but also for their pastoral lifestyle, herding cattle and sheep across the vast plains. The Yamnaya were not a settled civilization. They were nomadic, moving with their herds, following the rhythm of the seasons. This lifestyle shaped their society, which was decentralized and egalitarian, where wealth was shared rather than accumulated by a select few. Now let's delve into their language. The Yamnaya people are believed to have spoken an early form of Indo-European, the linguistic ancestor of many European languages today. This connection has led many linguists and archaeologists to hypothesize that the Yamnaya played a key role in spreading the Indo-European languages across Europe and Asia. The Yamnaya's burial customs were unique and quite elaborate, reflective of their beliefs about life, death, and the afterlife. They typically buried their dead in deep pits, often with their knees drawn up to their chests, a position that suggested the fetal pose. These graves were usually covered by a mound or a barrow, and the deceased were often accompanied by a rich array of grave goods, including pottery, weapons, and ornaments, perhaps to aid them in their journey to the afterlife. The influence of the Yamnaya did not end with their decline around 2000 BC. Genetic studies have revealed that a significant portion of the genetic makeup of modern Europeans can be traced back to the Yamnaya, suggesting a large-scale migration or cultural diffusion from the steppes into Europe. Two, in this video we will be taking a look at the autosomal DNA of three Yamnayan individuals from Samara in central Russia. I0357, which is a female with MTNAW6C, we will name her Helga, I0370, which is male with patrilineal DNA R1BZ2103, we will name him Anthony. I0429, which is male with patrilineal DNA R1BM269, we will name him Dimitri. Let's begin this epic video. So we're going to start with the appearance, facial traits of Helga. Uh, I chose this name because it's kind of, it sounds really Indo-European to me. It sounds like a um, Indo-European, Germanic, Scandinavian kind of name. So I thought it was pretty fitting for Yamna culture individual. Uh, she's got dark brown color eyes, which is very un-Germanic. She's got a Greek-shaped nose and black hair. Uh, once again, very un-Swedish um, phenotype, despite her Swedish name. She does not have blue eye haplotype 2 or blue eye haplotype 4, so very dark pigmentation, but blue eye haplotype 1 is undetermined. Uh, based on her genotypes in ASIP, OCA2, some other non-BH1, non-BH2 variations, of course, of OCA2 and SLC24E4 and KetoG and Tirpon and IR4, based on her genotypes in these genes, we can sort of assume that she's got white or uh, light skin, lighter than brown skin color. Uh, for my eye shape predictor, my eye shape predictor tool is giving her an Estonian eye shape. So kind of European or Caucasoid Euro European facial morphology, just a little bit darker than what's typical for modern Northern Europeans. And for hair shape predictor, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a very high quality prediction. It was only done with two SNPs, but my hair shape prediction for this individual is straight hair. Now we're moving on to Anthony. Anthony's got brown color eyes and the reason he's got brown instead of dark brown color eyes is because he's actually heterozygous for BH1 uh, and he does not have BH2 or obviously no BH4, no BH3. So, but he does have brown color eyes instead of dark brown. So maybe a little bit lighter in terms of eye color than the other two individuals that this video is about. He's got snub shaped nose and he's got black hair once again. Uh, for my eye shape predictor, my eye shape predictor is saying he's got um, what is it? Once again, Estonian, Estonian eye shape. So, um, seems, seems to be, um, Caucasoid, phen phenotypically Caucasoid as well. And my hair shape predictor tool is giving him a prediction for straight hair, uh, which was done with seven SNPs. Uh, a little bit higher quality prediction than the previous one. And on the screen, I have wrote down some light coloring variants that Anthony had. So you can, uh, pause and you can look through them. But, um, we can sort of assume by looking at this genotype here that he's probably got lighter skin tone and um, probably is comparable in terms of pigmentation to modern southern europeans 
Now our final individual is Dmitri. Uh, Dmitri has got dark brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and black hair. They all three of them have black hair, and I'm not sure what. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be any Yamna Samara individuals with anything other than black hair and brown eyes. Maybe there will be because I haven't really done uh, all of their genomes yet. This is only part one. There's going to be a couple more parts after this video. But I'm not expecting I'm not expecting there to be any Yamna genome with like blue eyes. So he does not have BH1. However, he does have some important light coloring variants in Oka2 gene, uh, which do contribute to a lighter color of the eyes and hair and skin. And my Nashakot do does take him into account. My Nashakot takes all of this that you see in the screen and more into account when it gives this prediction out. So it's not just like, um, you know, YSEC where it just looks at a couple like six six variations and then tells you that your eye color. No, my Nashakot looks at the whole the whole package, all of them. And uh, he's got, he does not have the rad variants in SLC45A2, so he's got darker non-European skin tone. Uh, however, if you look at his genotype in like IRF4 and Keto G, he probably does not have brown skin. He probably has like olive or kind of Mediterranean complexion in, in terms of pigmentation. For my eye shape predictor tool, it's actually predicting him to have a South Asian eye shape. And for my hair shape predictor tool, he's predicted to have wavy hair. Uh, however, this may not be a very reliable prediction as it was only done with four SNPs. Now we'll be taking a look at their GT match results and I chose Anthony to represent them all because they are all pretty similar to each other. Uh, they're all part of the same culture. They're all pretty similar to each other in terms of ethnicity. And Anthony's file is simply the highest quality file of the three. So that's why I chose Anthony to represent all of them. Uh, but you can, there's, there's going to be some differences. If you look at the other individuals, you can download them from link, which is in the description, by the way, and you can upload them to GT match for yourself and see for yourself. If you don't, um, if you want to see more, right? But I'm just going to show you Anthony here. And Anthony is getting more of a mixture of Lithuanian plus Tabasaran. Tabasaran are people in Dagestan uh, with the origins K13. He seems to be a mixture of uh, Northeastern European and Caucasian. This is what he scores with MZLPK11. Here we can see a lot of Caucasus admixture. 44% Caucasus hunter gatherer plus 9.5% Iran Mesolithic. That's um, a lot of Caucasus admixture. In fact, more Caucasus than European hunter gatherer admixture with this calculator. Uh, which is kind of different from all the other calculator results. And with the Oracle here, he's closest to Yamna from Kalmykia. And he's actually getting more of a mixture of Yamna, Samara, plus Satsurblia from, from the Caucasus. So he's more Caucasus shifted than the Yamna from Samara reference here. And with Pandiana LK12, we see the absolute opposite uh, image. With Pandiana LK12, we see only 37% Caucasus come together. So this calculator tends to underestimate the amount of Caucasus hunter gatherer admixture in Europeans. I noticed this a long time ago. And uh, with the Oracle here, he's actually getting more as a mixture of Yamna, Samara, plus some kind of Western or Eastern hunter gatherer. So he's more hunter gatherer shifted according to this Oracle. Uh, with PanDNA LK10, you see 45.6% Caucasus hunter gatherer admixture, but this calculator does tend to uh, on the other hand, overestimate the amount of Caucasus hunter gatherer admixture. So we can pretty much say that this individual has somewhere from 40 to 45 percent Caucasus hunter gatherer admixture in reality. Uh, the, the real number is going to be somewhere between PanDNA LK12 and PanDNA LK10 uh, results. With PanDNA LK10 results, he's getting more of a mixture of Lithuanian plus Makrani. Makranis are in southeastern Iran, and this is what he scores with Harappa World. You can see he's scoring 29 percent Baloch here. Uh, this kind of a West Asian component. But what's interesting, you might expect a Yamna to score Northeast European plus Caucasian, right? Because CHG, but no, it's scoring mostly Baloch. Most of its West Asian component is getting more as Baloch, uh, or which is a component that peaks in South Southeast Pakistanis, right? Southwest Pakistanis, excuse me. And he's getting more as a mixture of Finnish plus Brahwi, or Finnish plus Baloch, or Finnish plus Makrani, a mixture of Finnish, or some kind of Northeast European, plus a group from South Central Asia, um, Southwest Pakistan, or Southeastern Iran. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. So as you can see, this individual is pretty white, uh, pretty similar to me actually in the result, except I'm actually a little bit less white than him. I'm 12.5% uh, East Eurasian and 1% Sub-Saharan African. So this individual is kind of like a modern Russian in terms of admixture. Now, friends, now we will be looking at their traits, what kind of diseases they had, uh, what were their traits, were they lactose persistence, all that stuff that they tell, tolerate lactose well. We're going to start today with Helga uh, because she's the smallest file. She's only only an 11 megabyte file. Uh, analyze genome. It's going to ask us to enter a name. We're going to enter this. 
Okay, so uh, she's got GG here, which means no derived, no golden evidence in DRG2 profidence in proveration, which means more dopamine D2 receptors, um, kind of higher odds of schizophrenia, all that stuff, uh, less lesser likelihood of being a no-go learner, uh, but she's got AC in this variation of DRD2, which actually decreases number of dopamine D2 receptors, so these two genotypes, they kind of cancel each other out. She's got TT in this variation of DRD1, which is a very atypical genotype associated with higher odds of bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, very interesting stuff here. So, I'm not sure how DRD1 is playing a role in schizophrenia. I know it is, it, and it does play a role in my calculation for the likelihood of, you know, illness, polygenic risk scores. But I don't really understand how dopamine D2 receptor 1 can um, play a role in schizophrenia because, like, antipsychotics mostly work by blocking dopamine receptor D2, right? So what's D1 doing there? But I guess uh, if you look at her genotype here, she's got a very typical genotype. Uh, a very rare genotype associated with higher odds of bipolar and schizophrenia. Um, okay, so she's got CC here in DRD3, which is another rare genotype that is implicated in higher odds of OCD and intellectual disability. And she's got AA in this variation of DRD3, uh, which is in implicated in a higher risk of autism and autistic personality traits such as rigid behavior. Okay. For lactose persistence, she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. She's not lactose persistent. Um, well, you know, she might have some other lactose persistence mutation that was present in the Yamne, but isn't present in modern Europeans. That's also possible. Uh, well, for the empathy gene, we can't really tell because the main the, the main variation is missing. It's not in her file, too quality, too low quality file. Uh, for diabetes, GG here, which leads to a lower risk of type one diabetes, and CC here, which leads to a lower risk of type two diabetes, probably does not have diabetes. For myopia, AA here, which leads to slightly increased risk of myopia. Well, most of you guys watching probably have AA in this variation. Uh, most of you have the AA genotype here, but some people have AG or GG. Basically, the G allele greatly reduces the odds of myopia, and um, but it's pretty rare and it's only found in Europeans. Uh, no micro P, you know what that is. Um, increased cranial size and 2% higher IQ, and not a carrier of albinism type 1B mutation. Now let's see her polygenic risk scores. So for polygenic risk scores, she's got a, wow, very high risk score for schizophrenia compared to Northern Europeans. Uh, not so high compared to Sub-Saharan Africans, but seven times higher odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for Northern Europeans. Okay. Uh, for type 1, di type 2 diabetes, she's got lower, slightly lower than average odds of type 2 diabetes. And for Alzheimer's, I don't think she was genotyped for anything that's related to Alzheimer's, so uh, that's just no result here. Okay, now let's reset the scores. That's important to do. And now we're going to choose our second file, which is going to be Dmitri. Right. Okay, so Dmitri has also no no golden evidence in Profidence in Pro. Uh, once again, higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and higher odds of schizophrenia. Uh, GG here, which leads to slightly lower risk, risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. Uh, the A allele here basically increases the amount of dopamine D2 receptors and leads to uh, increased odds of various stuff like schizophrenia and nicotine dependence, but he has got GG here. Um, is there anything interesting here? No, not really. Okay, so what about lactose persistence? GG in this variation, which means does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Once again, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is pretty interesting because uh, you would think that if anybody if anybody were to have it, it would be the Yamne, and since they drank mil milk so much. But no. Uh, diabetes, he's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes. For myopia AA here, which is a typical gene type, once again leads to slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness, so he does not have the G allele that protects against myopia. Uh, once again, no micro P. And mix of muscle types more likely to be sprinter than endurance athlete. So he's got CC gen CT genotype here. And he's got one fat gene variant in FTOs, R RS9939609. So he's got, well, I think the average person has one fat gene, right? Because it's not like a rare mutation to have the fat gene variant uh, in FTOs. But it does influence like your body mass index quite greatly. 
and he's not a carrier of any of the albinism mutations and he's got higher odds of methamphetamine induced psychosis. Now let's see what about his polygenic risk scores. Right, so for polygenic risk scores, he's got two times higher, um, two times the average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans, a lot higher odds of schizophrenia than was typical for Northern Europeans, not as much as the previous individual, but still a lot, a lot higher, and, wait, did I miss this? Oh, I missed this, yes, okay, so he's got CC here, which leads to increased risk of Alzheimer's, and that's why you see 3.8 times the average odds of Alzheimer's for him, so he's got um, pretty high odds of Alzheimer's compared to what's typical for Europeans. Okay, we're going to reset the scores. And we're going to look at our third individual, which is Anthony, which is actually the person with, with the highest coverage file. All right, so Anthony... Anthony's got AA in Komsval met variation, which actually means met met genotype. He's a warrior. Uh, pretty cool. Higher dopamine levels in the brain, advantages in attention and motivation tasks, disadvantages in stress resiliency, and he's got TT and MAOA. Which actually also is a warrior gene, so he's warrior in Compt and he's warrior in MAOA. He's a super warrior. Uh, he's basically got a lot of dopamine, and that is coming together with wow, that's crazy. That is com coming together with GG in the no go learner variation. So that's coming together with higher dopamine D2 receptor availability. So just looking at this, I'm already getting the idea this individual might have like bipolar, schizophrenia, something like that. And look at that, he's also got AA here. Wow. Uh, which is implicated in increased number of dopamine to receptor sites. So he's got AA here. There is. Does he have anything else that increases the risk for that type of stuff? Okay, so he's got GG in TAC1, so which means more dopamine to receptors once again. This does not protect him from any of the mental health issues I mentioned earlier. Um. Okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm going to be really curious to find out his score for schizophrenia and the other. Uh, the other stuff. For lactose persistence, he's got GG here, which means this individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. For the empathy gene, he's got CC in, in this variation of OXTR, which is an associated with uh, increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy, but he's got GG here, which basically leads to lower levels of empathy, so we can't really tell because he's not genotyped for the main variation that I typically go by. Um, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decre decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. For Alzheimer's, TT here, which leads to slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's. For myopia, does not have the G allele in this variation. Once again, does not carry the allele that protects against myopia. And finally, for drug response, higher odds of methamphetamine-induced psychosis, once again. And not a carrier for, for cutaneous albinism type 1b. Okay, now let's see what we wanted to see for a long time now. Let's see his polygenic risk scores. All right. Okay, so he's not as extreme in his polygenic risk scores. He's not as extreme as the first woman, but he's still got a significantly higher odds of schizophrenia compared to Northern Europeans, and I'll, I'll tell you why that is. Uh, it's because of it's because of all this. It's because of all this. That's why he's scoring like that, because my um, algorithm that does take all that into account. Uh, for type 1 diabetes, he's got 0 0.9 times, basically lower odds of diabetes than what's typical for modern people. And he's got slightly lower odds of Alzheimer's compared to what's typical for modern people. By the way, uh, for these polygenic risk scores, it's not just what you see on the screen. So there's stuff you see on the screen, and then there's stuff you don't see on the screen, right? And my polygenic risk scores, they take into account both. So there's a couple, there's like 20 different variations that are not shown on the screen that my polygenic risk scores page takes into account when it gives you this result. So just because you have like this genotype here, for example, does not mean you're going to have a very high odds of schizophrenia. I was expecting the odds to be higher, to be honest. But that's, um, that's pretty much all I had to say here. That's all I had to show in this video. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe. And as I mentioned previously, as I mentioned previously, you can download uh, all of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And that's all I had to say. Goodbye.